Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to give it a couple more moments while more people log in. All right, well, more people are joining us, but we will get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us, all of you from around the world, and welcome to this informational webinar for Imperial College Business School's upcoming online program, Imperial Business Analytics from Data to Decisions. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Now, we, before we get started uh, with our webinar today, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Mark Linehan. I'm a webinar facilitator with Emeritus, so I'm gonna be guiding us through uh, this program webinar today. But the first thing I want to do is I wanna give you a little breakdown on how Zoom works for those of you who might not have used Zoom before. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to look for the chat box. Now it should be on the bottom of your Zoom screen on the right-hand side. There should be a little bubble that says chat. And in there, I want you to say hello and let us know uh, where you're coming in from today. Now, when you open up the chat box, it should say uh, right where you type your message, it should say two, and you can choose either all panelists or all panelists and attendees. So if you can make sure that it's all panelists and attendees and say, hello, I'm gonna type in a message myself right now. I'm coming in from Malden, Massachusetts, just north of Boston. Oh, and they're coming in quickly. We got UK, Greece, UK. Hello, Giuseppe from Italy. Hello from Jordan. Good afternoon in Milan. Greetings from Mexico City. Hello, hello. Lima, Peru, Paris, London. Ask out United Kingdom, South Africa, Mexico, Shanghai, London, Canada, Switzerland, South Africa. From Romania, hello, hello. Germany, Belgium, Bangladesh, Brazil. Dubai, Bangkok, Singapore, Japan. And more and more, more and more hellos coming in. So hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. As you can see, we have a very strong international cohort and that's gonna be reflected in your classes as well. And we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that as we go through the webinar today. So while more people are continuing to join us, let's uh, take it through. Here's a beautiful shot of Imperial College today. Well, let's go through what we're gonna be talking about on this webinar. So for the next hour, uh, we're gonna be talking about a little bit about what this program has to offer. And again, this program starts in one week on March 31st. So while we're on this webinar, we're gonna be talking about the Imperial Advantage. Why Imperial College? Why is it the best school for this course? And why should you take this course? We're gonna be talking about the advantage that Imperial College has over other schools. We're gonna be introducing our amazing program faculty, both of whom are on the line today. We're gonna to be talking about the learning outcomes for this course. So what can you expect to learn out of this course and the skills that you're going to achieve and attain while you're in this course? We're gonna be going over the program highlights, the syllabus, the learning experience, the case studies, and the assignments. This is an intensive uh, multimodal course. So we're gonna be going over all the different ways and all the different approaches that we're gonna be covering in this uh, program. And we'll also briefly cover the program fee and payment schedule, but to also give you a feel as to how these online programs will work, uh, this webinar will be reflective of the kind of back and forth and the kind of interaction that you will have with our program faculty uh, during this program. So at the very end, we're gonna be having a Q&A. So again, if you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, on the right-hand side, you saw that chat box. On the left, you'll see a white box with a Q, and that's our Q&A box. So as our faculty are going through the course today, and as we hear more about Imperial College, if you have a question at any time during this webinar, punch that question into the Q&A box, and then at the end we'll have 15 or 20 minutes where we will be able to go through all your questions and answer any concerns you may have so that you will have all the information and tools you need to choose this as the best course for you. So with that, uh, we actually have uh, several webinar speakers today. Uh, we have Dr. Alex Castro, the data scientist and senior teaching fellow at Imperial College Business School. We have Professor Wolfram Wiesemann, the professor of analytics and operations at Imperial College Business School Executive Education. 
But I'm first going to hand it over to my friend and colleague, Russell Miller, the Director of Learning Solutions and Innovation at Imperial College Business School Executive Education, and he's going to take us through the Imperial College Advantage. Russell, take it away, my friend. Thanks, Mark. Um, that's great. Can you uh, move the slide on? Perfect. Excellent. Um, well, welcome, everybody, um, to uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, really excited that you're all able to join us. An amazing uh, international cohort, as, as Mark uh, mentioned earlier. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time kind of reading through all of the information on the screen, but I do want to pick out a couple of things that I think are going to be really important uh, to you as you begin your um, program journey with us here at Imperial. So um, firstly, uh, the, the notion that we have here of uh, our culture of working across disciplines. Um, what does this mean? Well, it, it means for, for you that we're able to bring together the finest thinkers uh, not just from business, but from science, technology, engineering, and medicine from across um, our institution um, to create academically rigorous, yet really practical and application-focused uh, learning with a very unique flavor. So this is something that is very different and sets us apart from many of the other schools um, around the world, particularly when we're working uh, with you on kind of more te technical subject matters and kind of business analytics is kind of one of those key focus of, of the work that we do here at um, Imperial. So, um, so aside from our culture, the other key uh, point on this slide is the, uh, is, is the final one really. Um, so the platform that you'll be using uh, through your, your learning journey with us, um, it's the same platform that underpins our globally renowned programs like our MBA, um, our MSc programs that are delivered online. So you'll be um, using the same rich functionality um, that you'll get um, the, the kind of students that are learning uh, on campus uh, get to experience too. Um, so that functionality is kind of set out here really. So um, it's truly engaging. So um, there's a range of different uh, ways in which we'll be working with you during the course of the program. So you'll experience live webinars, interactive activities, uh, video lectures, um, as well as a range of uh, functionalities that enable you to um, really build a strong peer network with your, with your fellow uh, professionals that are, that are attending the course too. So you know, our aim and um, our experience from, from other programs that we've run with our, with our platform um, is that you build not only your knowledge and your skills, but you also build those relationships with um, each other during the course of your journey with us. But it's not just about the functionality, obviously. Um, we're very pleased that we have uh, both Wolfram and um, Alex with us here today, who are gonna talk to us a little bit more uh, about the, the, the program uh, that you'll uh, experience with us. So we have uh, Dr. Alex Castro. Um, here. He's a data science and senior teaching fellow uh, with the business school and we have Wolfram, Professor Wolfram Wieserman, who's Professor of Analytics and Operations at the business school too. Um, so without further ado, let me hand it over to you. Okay, great. Um, we are pleased to electronically meet everyone. Uh, looking forward to interacting with uh, all of you, hopefully, when uh, our classes go live. So um, just Thanks, Russell, for the introduction. And just as a matter of introduction here, I'm, um, as Russell already said, um, I have a, do a double title, so to speak, in the college. I work both as a, in the capacity of a data scientist. I'm also a teaching fellow in our uh, business analytics uh, program, which is part of our operations uh, research program. And uh, I think one of my uh, biggest contributions uh, to the program is uh, bringing uh, in a bit of this uh, uh, industry uh, know-how and, uh, uh, and sort of like keeping up a fresh perspective of the technical skills and that are in demand, uh, let's say, in the both data science and machine learning landscape and so and also partnering with uh, my colleagues uh, who also not only have uh, academic and research expertise but also sort of like are in the forefront in, in terms of like applied research from uh, consultancy engagements and things like that. So that's sort of like a, 
short spiel about myself and then I'll pass it on to Wolfram to introduce himself. Thanks, Alex. Uh, thank you all for joining. It's great to see uh, so many of you uh, signing up for today's webinar. So my name is Wolfram Wiesmann. I'm a professor of analytics and operations, as Russell mentioned already. Uh, I'm also the academic director of our on-campus master's program in business analytics at Imperial College. So I'm looking after the content of our business analytics Oh, Wolfram, I think we've uh, Alex, why don't you pick it back up? Master's program. Oh, I think both, oh, apologies. The, there may have been a technical glitch okay. and we just lost Am Wolfram for the last 10 seconds. He was going to be kind of rewind it. Okay. Oh. Am I back again? Yeah, you yep. are. Okay, great. Sorry for that. Um, so what I wanted to say is I'm the academic director of our on-campus master's program in business analytics. And I think that puts me into a good position to co-design this course with Alex, because what we have done is we have, had a we have taken a close look at our entire master's program content here at Imperial College. And we have taken out the, the most important bits to give you an authoritative overview uh, of the field. Uh, I am also a fellow of the Imperial Business Analytics Center here at Imperial College, uh, which gives me uh, plenty of interactions with uh, both government policymakers as well as industry um, on the analytics front. And uh, I spent about the last 15 years of my career on analytics related problems. Uh, my area of expertise is decision making and uncertainty. And in the last couple of years, I have uh, tried to also work on the interface of machine learning and optimization theory. And you will see in the program content that this shines through in this program uh, as well. That's all from my side for now. Perhaps we can go to the next slide. Okay, great. So um, I'll... I'll start here by um, uh, describe, using this diagram to describe sort of like the over overarching objectives of the program, then I'm sort of like pass it on to Wolfram to uh, complement what I've, um, I've, I'll be uh, speaking through here. So uh, as Wolfram just mentioned, uh, the idea of this uh, executive program was to encapsulate and and bring together sort of like the, the highlights of our more uh, in-depth and technical program uh, that we offer at business school, uh, the business school, uh, which is our uh, business analytics MSc, um, in a way that would enable uh, uh, managers, senior managers, people in a executive capacity to get, uh, obtain a, a really good understanding, uh, let's say, uh, some sort of like literacy of what's happening in the in the let's say uh, quantitative decision making uh, 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 landscape and uh, and sort of like and and more recently in data science as well. So you see here that um, throughout the slide we are um, highlighting so, somehow uh, the you could say the the cycle that one goes through when um, uh, assessing uh, or, or understanding uh, problems which are driven by data. And we're, we're making an effort to, to, to make sure that through the materials that we've created, through the exercises, through the activities we have created, that you can live through the process of quantitative data-driven decision-making yourselves. So, for example, we're talking about recognizing uh, patterns using uh, data clustering techniques. This is something that uh, Wolfram is going to touch upon more in detail soon. Um, understanding, drawing, assessing, differentiating. And I think uh, you can see here a long list of the different applications that we're going to be looking at in this course. But the, the highlight is how to go from data to decisions, which is obviously the, the, the title of our course. Um, well, from what would you like more to say? 
Absolutely. So the question is, of course, how can we show you this end-to-end -end process from data to decisions? It turns out that this requires us to teach you a number of different topics here. Uh, first of all, we'll teach you uh, some basics of probability theory and statistics so that you can understand and, and uh, rigorously analyze data. We'll be touching upon a machine learning, which will help you to make inference from data. We'll be discussing optimization theory, um, which helps you to make decisions from data. And also we'll be covering several topics in computer science, in particular coding in Python, so that you can implement this end-to-end -end process on a computer. That's the, that's the key goal. And on the next slide, we will now see an overview of the program and you'll see how um, this, uh, how this overall goal is uh, achieved in the five modules. The first three modules will be taught by Alex. Those are the first um, eight weeks of the program. And then the, um, the last two models, which are the second eight weeks, are going to be taught by me. So I'll hand it back to Alex for now to discuss the first three models. And uh, then I will be talking about module four and five. So here is, uh, we, 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 we're keeping in mind uh, that uh, we are trying to uh, enable uh, people to understand sort of the technical aspects that go into data-driven quantitative decision-making, but at the same time, it's not our intention to overload anyone and be over-demanding on, let's say, on either the mathematics or the programming side. That said, we do hope though that through this program, you get a, a good understanding and a basic literacy of both the mathematics and sort of the technical uh, capabilities uh, or the technical resources which are necessary for driving this type of initiative, let's say, if that's your intention at work of either overseeing such initiative, managing it, or championing it, let's say. So the way the program has been designed is being for uh, five modules. Uh, um, the first three modules are really sort of like a breakdown of uh, what sort of modern analytics encompasses, uh, which is descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. So going from all the way to analyzing and getting a good understanding of the data sets that you have at hand that were produced through uh, um, uh, the sort of like the regular doing of business all the way to how to go from that from those raw data sets and producing actual actionable insights that can turn and improve and or change uh, important metrics on your business so uh, Wolfram will talk about more, about more uh, uh, we'll talk about those uh, last two modules in more detail. So let me walk you through the first three modules, Dan. Uh, math and statistics primer, it's, it was meant to be a, uh, perhaps a, uh, a quick and fun tutorial for those who haven't uh, uh, seen much of those subjects before. And also as a refresher for those who have seen maths and stats in uni or in, even before, but it's been a long time since they actually had to be thinking quantitative terms. Uh, we will be covering, and uh, because uh, of the importance of probabilistic and statistics thinking in machine learning and data science these days, we're gonna be recapping some of the basic, but very important notions that are required for describing data and explaining the types of insights that you obtain from say, a machine learning algorithm. And then the second module, which is the Python primer. Uh, Python um, nowadays became the lingua franca of machine learning in industry. Uh, um, obviously there are uh, shops and uh, different shops uh, may still use some legacy uh, programming languages uh, uh, but still, uh, most businesses these days will be using uh, uh, Python for uh, the prototyping, for the development, for the productionizing of machine learning products. So we thought it would be important that even if you don't end up doing, let's say, uh, uh, software development yourself, you have a good understanding of what is Python, why it's useful, how it's being used, and we really help you get a good understanding in terms of 
enabling you with the language to say overseeing your project or many managing your project that requires Python. And also, let's say, if you're trying to upscale uh, your internal team from moving from uh, a purely Excel-based, spreadsheet-based uh, business analytics model into a more modern business analytics model, now you, you're going to be able to understand uh, what, how and why Python can be useful for that. And that's based on um, it, this, this, this insight is based not only on our industry experience, but also we've been helping businesses recently uh, revamping their business analytics capabilities. And the Python transformation is really tremendous when uh, business go through it. So, uh, so that's that. Those are the, the two sort of technical primers that we believe will enable you to have uh, to learn more efficiently and truly to have more fun throughout the rest of the course. Now, descriptive analytics is, is step one of the three steps I mentioned at the beginning to enable you to do data science. It's the first step that everyone takes before they jump into a larger uh, machine learning or data science related project, which is you have data and you want to understand what's available in your data, which types of features uh, is my data dirty? Does it require further cleaning? Uh, how are different variables in my data set related? Can I get rid of some variables? Should I ask for more data? So that's basically what the descriptive analytics uh, module is trying to teach you. And, uh, and also, I think one of the takeaways is how important it is or, or how, how important it is to really be careful about how you're looking at data because different points of view will lead to different conclusions. So that, those are one of the highlights of the course. And that leads to the even, I would say, equally interesting modules, which is predictive and prescriptive analytics. And I'll, I'll pass it on to my colleague Wolfram to talk about it. Thanks, Alex. So as Alex was mentioning, descriptive analytics is about understanding your data. Um, in modules four and five, which will take up half of the course, we want to take it uh, important steps further to making inference from data, as well as taking decisions, informed decisions based on data. And that will be the topic of predictive analytics, which will take uh, four weeks, um, as well as uh, prescriptive analytics. Okay, um, now in predictive analytics, we will start with an introduction. Uh, where we first give an overview of the machine learning landscape. Uh, those of you who have um, already looked a bit into uh, the machine learning literature, you have probably seen that there is a bewildering uh, variety of different topics that are, that are treated in this field. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we try to give you an overview based on our understanding of the field, uh, what the major dividing lines are, such as the difference between um, supervised and unsupervised learning, will tell you the differences between prediction and classification, as well as the differences between parametric and non-parametric approaches. We'll then also talk you through the machine learning process. This is kind of um, uh, where we put our managerial hats on. Uh, we will be talking about the machine learning project as a project that is implemented in a company. and we walk you have four different classes of machine learning methods that we're going to discuss. Namely, can you still hear me? That's all good, good. Um, namely, nearest neighbors, decision trees, support vector machines, and clustering techniques. We have uh, thought long and hard about the right mix of methods. We wanted to make sure that you see uh, both parametric and non-parametric approaches, approaches that work uh, particularly well for prediction versus classification problems, as well as um, uh, supervised learning approaches, as well as unsupervised learning approaches. So starting with the first method, when we're talking about nearest neighbor methods, um, we're going to introduce to you nearest neighbor methods, both for classification as well as regression problems. Um, and once we have done that, we will touch upon the important issue of scaling the data. It turns out that um, 
uh, nearest neighbor methods are sensitive to scaling as are many other methods. So we, uh, we need to see whether our data is scaled well and if it is not scaled well, well which approach we should uh, take to, uh, to normalize our data. We'll also cover uh, the important uh, concepts of training set, validation set, and test set. That's one of the major differences between statistics uh, and machine learning. And we'll be talking about the bias variance trade-off, which is uh, a trade-off that underlies any machine learning method that you can envision. Moving on then from nearest neighbors, we're going to talk about uh, classification and regression trees. There we will learn the, uh, the definitions of the entropy as well as the Gini index to measure disorder in data. And uh, we're then uh, introducing the concept of information gain, which tells us how to build up such a decision tree in order to classify data well. And we'll be talking about tree pruning and we're going to be talking about tree ensembles. So we're talking about really state of the art methods such as bagging, boosting and random forests. If you look at uh, many of the uh, machine learning, um, if you look at many of the machine learning competitions, then you will see that boosting and random forests are always amongst the top performing methods. So we're really making a jump here to, to what is currently at the forefront of our knowledge in machine learning. Next uh, week, we're going to talk about support vector machines. Um, a very important supervised learning technique, primarily for classification problems. Um, we start with hard margin support vector machines. Um, we then introduce you to the kernel trick, which is a very powerful trick to, uh, to, to learn very complicated models using support vector machines. We uh, then go over soft margin support vector machines, which allow us to deal with noise in the data. And we're going to talk about a very important gener general uh, technique to make the most out of your data, which is called cross validation. So you see in every week, we're going to discuss a particular method, but as part of the, as the week progresses, we also pick up general concepts such as the bias variance trade-off or cross validation that are um, valid for all machine learning methods, but we use the particular method class so that we have a concrete example in which we can discuss these concepts. And then the last week of predictive analytics is used on clustering techniques. Clustering is an unsupervised learning technique. And we're going to discuss the two major forms of clustering, namely hierarchical clustering, as well as k-means clustering. We'll also spend some time on assessing the quality of a clustering. That is a, a, a very crucial point in practice, but it's not an easy point to get one's head around. So we'll be talking about things like elbow charts and how to, um, how to, how to measure the uh, deg potential degree of suboptimality of a clustering. So that's what we're doing in module four. In the last module, module five, we'll be talking about prescriptive analytics which takes things uh, one step further. We don't just want to make inference from data, but we actually want to take decisions from data. That is often very important because real world problems that we face are increasingly complicated and they require us to take many decisions at the same time. If you think about a supermarket chain that wants to open up a new uh, store and they have to uh, figure out which, uh, which uh, products to keep in that store, an average supermarket store might stock about 20,000, 30,000 products. Nobody can decide by hand which products to store. Um, this is just one out of many examples. So in other words, what we need to do is, in many situations, we don't just want to make inference from data, but we want the computer to take decisions based on data. And this is something that happens routinely throughout the, the world. If you, if you uh, the next time you book a flight or a hotel room, you will see that the prices for these uh, commodities are fluctuating the entire time. This is nothing else than an optimization algorithm, a computer algorithm that takes decisions for the, uh, for the corresponding company automatically. So here's what we're going to do in module five in prescriptive analytics. We're going to cover the two most widely used classes of optimization problems, namely linear programming as well as integer programming. Uh, in linear programming, we are going to um, uh, first motivate uh, optimization theory through a couple of examples. 
We're going through a production planning example as well as a supplier sourcing example. Um, and we are subsequently discussing how we can solve these linear programs using Ample, which is a state-of-the-art software package for solving optimization problems, Excel, which is a broadly available and relatively speaking cheap tool that everybody has access to, as well as Python. Um, and then in uh, the final weeks, we're going to discuss integer programming. The key difference between linear programming and integer programming is that in integer programming, we uh, don't just have continuous decisions, such as how much of a particular product to produce uh, or how much, uh, how much money to spend on a particular asset in the financial market, but we can also have discrete decisions, in particular binary decisions such as yes, no decisions. We're going to look at problems where we can decide should we invest in a particular project or not? Should we build our facility at a particular location or not? Should we expand on our um, capacity at a particular plant or not? Um, what we're going to do in integer programming is we again motivate the problem class through practical examples. We're going to look at a capital investment problem as well as a personal scheduling problem. Uh, we're going to discuss subsequently logical constraints, which is um, kind of a, standard, a standardized approach to model complicated optimization problems in a step-by-step -step manner. And then finally, we're going to discuss how to solve these integer programs, again, using Ample, Excel, and Python. Um, an important aspect of, uh, uh, of this course is the assignments in each week of module four and five, you're going to have an assignment that um, allows you to check that you actually follow the concepts. Um, and of course, we have help available if you have any questions there. And these assignments will combine some theoretical work with practical coding experience. So we will make sure that you, that you can actually um, convert your knowledge into uh, practical usefulness after, after attending this course. So that's what I wanted to say on modules four and five. Perhaps we go to the next slide. An important aspect of our course is case studies. Um, at Imperial, in, in our, both our on-campus programs as well as in our online offerings, uh, we believe we learn best by looking at concrete examples. And then afterwards, we can distill the theoretical insights that we gain from these, uh, from these uh, case studies. So what you will see is a lot of case studies from different companies um, that help you to understand these uh, different topics that we're covering. For example, we're looking at uh, Kearns and Associates. That's a company that is, um, it's a construction company that undertakes, um, that needs to decide which projects, which construction projects to invest in, given a limited budget as well as uh, financial constraints on uh, their profit targets. We'll be looking at the problem of Union Airways um, which is a personal scheduling problem where the company needs to, uh, needs to man a, um, a call center uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to respond to their customers. We'll be looking at a problem of New Bedford Steel Company, which um, needs to acquire uh, some of their raw materials from different suppliers. Uh, under various constraints in terms of financial viability, in terms of quality of the product, in terms of union constraints, etc. We'll be looking at uh, the problem of Pandora, which is a mu music uh, streaming website that uses a recommender system to um, learn your music taste. And we'll be looking at uh, some problems from the cybersecurity industry as well. Um, <laughs> The key aspect here is really that we, that we want to make sure that we don't just rush through the material, but we give examples that hopefully stay in your mind even months after you have undertaken, uh, after you have undertaken this course. I think that's all uh, from my side for the, for the case studies. All right, thank you so much, Professor Wiesemann, Dr. Castro. Thank you so much for taking us through this amazing course. So now, 
Uh, we have a lot of great questions blowing up our Q&A box. So I'm going to quickly take us through uh, a little bit of housekeeping, and then we're going to get right to our Q&A. So uh, one of the questions we had in our Q&A is, what do you get at the end to prove that you have all this amazing information, that you've learned these great skills uh, from our incredible faculty? Uh, upon completion of this program, participants will be rewarded, uh, awarded a verified digital certificate of participation from Imperial College Business School. So as you can see, it will look just like this. You can put it on your LinkedIn, you can put it on your resume, and it will be signed by the faculty. And this will verify that you have completed the course uh, as it has been spelled out for you. So you can put this on your LinkedIn, uh, you can put this on your resume, and this will let employers, future employers, your current employer know uh, that you have a leg up on other people in terms of your skill set. Uh, some brief uh, details on this course. Again, it starts in one week, March 31st. So do not delay. I know program support has already put a link in the chat box that you can click on to register. Hopefully they'll be putting that up again. So I know that it's very easy to say, well, you know, I have a whole week to register. I don't need to do it right now. Register now. That week is going to fly by and you're going to regret missing this course. It's a four month course. So you don't want to have to wait another five months or so to log in again and to register for this course again. So it's a four month course. Uh, the program fees, as you can see there, we also have three flexible payment options. So it's a four month course. So you're getting a lot of school for not that much money, in my opinion. So this is, this is for the kind of faculty and the kind of schooling that you're getting. I think this is a remarkable deal. Um, if that first paid in full, if that seems like too much, we have those other two options, paying two installments, paying three installments. So whatever your financial situation is, we think we'll be able to figure out something so that everyone can participate in this course. And now my friends, it is time for our amazing Q&A. So if you have a question for our faculty about this course, if you have a question for Russell about Imperial College, if you have a question for me about, I don't know, any situation where I'm answering a question means that things have probably gone off the rails. So we probably don't want me answering questions. <laughs> um, but uh, we did have a couple uh, questions right off the bat. One question we had was, is this webinar being recorded? That question I can't answer. Yes, it is. It will be made available to you. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that if you click on that link that's in the chat box uh, where you can register for this course, uh, program support can follow up with you and can get you a recording of this webinar. Uh, we have had several people uh, ask questions. I don't know if this is more for uh, Professor Visamon or Dr. Castro, but they've asked about um, if you need specific software for this course, if there's any uh, specialized software that they need. Um, and it seems to be also a little bit of, th there's the hardware component to it, the software component, but generally people need to know what do they need in advance to take this course, both in terms of software and knowledge, what do they need beforehand before they take this course? Okay, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, Wolfram may have more to pitch in as well. So as we've mentioned in the in, in the introduction to the five modules yes the, the, we, we will be using software um, most of the software we will be using is open source software um, uh, so for example for python and i think there will be a description a more in, a detailed description of uh, how that plays into the module uh, in the in the um, marketing materials, etc. But um, the main point is we're going to be using Anaconda, which is a open source uh, Python distribution uh, that everyone can download for free online. Um, you, uh, it's available for all major operation systems, so it should be no problem to download and install it. Uh, if for some reason um, Usually we uh, advise people to use their personal machines uh, for uh, engaging into this uh, on online uh, uh, learning experiences. But if you do have to use your, uh, let's say, computer, laptop, do liaise with your IT uh, personnel so that they can uh, enable you to, for example, install the software. Uh, the other two uh, pieces of software we would be using in this program is um, Excel, uh, which uh, mo most corporate accounts have access to Excel. If not, uh, do get in touch with us. 
And uh, Wolfram mentioned the third one, which is Ample, and uh, he may be able to provide more detail on how one can go about obtaining Ample. Absolutely. So uh, one word about Excel. Um, I assume that most of you probably have access to Excel. Should you not and you don't want to purchase Excel, there is actually a Google alternative that also works in almost the same way, which is available open source. So if you encounter any difficulties there, that can be dealt with. Now, the only software package that we are using, which is not open source, is Ample. Um, we thought about this uh, carefully. We do want to show you Ample because it is um, the state-of-the-art package that all the major companies use that have to solve large-scale optimization problems. So if you're thinking about uh, companies like airlines that need to solve huge-scale optimization problems that optimize over the entire fleet, and those are the problems that they would solve using Ample. Now there is a free trial version of Ample, uh, which one can download and we, uh, we uh, will uh, explain to you as part of this course how to obtain that free trial version. And that version is completely, um, is completely sufficient for our purposes. So in other words, there is no software uh, bar possibly Excel, which can be substituted by a Google um, equivalent. Uh, there is no software that you would need to purchase as part of this course. All the, all the software is available uh, for free. Excellent, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we also had several questions that I'm gonna combine into one massive question. Uh, we have multiple people who are project managers uh, in their different workplaces. And so they want to know if it'll work for managers, but then we also have specific questions about, you know, people who work in construction, real estate, accounting and auditing. I know those are many specific examples, but could you gentlemen tell us a little bit more about uh, if this course is built for people in all those different sectors and people, especially that, uh, that project manager level, we seem to have a lot of them on the line today. So could you speak specifically to uh, if this course is helpful to them? Um, may I take this one, Alex? Yeah, sure. Great. So as it turns out, um, and I was almost a, a bit fighting with myself not to mention this, it turns out we do have um, case studies and assignments in the construction industry, in the food industry. We do have an assignment that has to do with finance uh, slash insurance. Um, however, it, um, I think it is not so much the concrete case studies, whether, whether we have the case study that fits your, um, your, uh, your sector. Um, what we're trying to do is the examples that we bring and the method, methodologies that we teach are applicable universally. So we obviously, um, we, we, had to, uh, we had to decide which material to cover in four months and which material to leave out. What we, uh, we made a conscious choice that we, gave, um, that we gave priority to material that can be applied to a variety of sectors. So even though the, even though the uh, example industries that you mentioned, we happen to cover them in examples, um, if there are other industries that we don't cover, uh, the methods that we are discussing, uh, they, are, uh, they are very general and the case studies that we're discussing are typically also uh, very general. So uh, for example, we have a case study about uh, from the construction industry. That same case study can, can work uh, in, a slight, uh, in a slightly different way for the financial industry. It can work uh, for, for R&D um, uh, managers. It can, it can work for other areas. So my personal um, suggestion here is um, don't worry too much whether we have a case study particularly in your sector. The case studies that we have chosen as well as the methods that we have chosen are very broad and they can be used in many different sectors. So, uh, so wherever you work, we are confident that we're covering material that is actually going to be relevant for you, assuming that your goal is to take informed decisions based on data. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Russell, I want to bring you back in. Uh, we have a couple questions. Uh, I'm going to combine them again into one massive question, but we had several imperial questions I wanted to throw at you. 
Uh, I had a question about the certificate, if it counted as an accreditation in the United Kingdom, uh, how long has Imperial College taught this course? And some people wanted to compare this course to Imperial College's MBA program. Okay, so um, let me, uh, let me, what was the first question, Mark, sorry. Well, the first one was about whether or not the digital certificate is an accreditation in the United Kingdom. Okay. And yeah, I didn't want to answer that because accreditation means something different in the United States. So I didn't. Yeah, ab absolutely. No, thank you for the, for the question. So this is a certificate of completion. Um, so the certificate uh, is uh, for successful completion of the, of the program. Um, in terms of uh, any kind of assessment that, that is, a, is part of the program as well, you know, there are no exams um, to, to this. This is a, an executive education program. So we are looking for your ability to complete successfully uh, the, the modules as you pass through them. And uh, at the end of the program, you receive a, a certificate of completion. And um, um, how, how long has Imperial College uh, taught this course, Russell? So, um, so this course uh, is kind of the, the material that, we, that we've put into the course or, or Wolfram and Alex have built into the program. Um, it's tried and tested material that's been taught a number of times um, you know, on our on campus. Uh, this is the first run of the, the new kind of program uh, online, um, but it draws upon I mean, a great faculty expertise, material that has been um, uh, designed specifically for, for this type of executive audience. Uh, to, to have that academic rigor, but also that practical focus too. Um, Wolfram or Alex, I don't know if you want to kind of comment any further on, on the kind of content that you've chosen and, uh, and kind of its kind of heritage, if you like. Um, yes, so I think um, the advantage with the course material that we have chosen here is it is indeed very uh, mature material. Um, obviously, we are changing it every year to keep it up to date with the latest developments, but um, Imperial College has been one of the first universities to actually offer a master's degree in business analytics. I think our master's in business analytics celebrates uh, the on-campus program, celebrates its fifth year of existence this year. This is, uh, this is older actually than, than many of the programs. And I think this is an advantage of this course. This material obviously has been revised a number of times. We have taken the feedback of many generations of students into account. Uh, to, uh, to make the most out of the material. And um, we are also one of the first uh, movers in offering an online master's degree in business analytics. So not just uh, do we have experience with the material on the on-campus side, but this is also material that, uh, that has been tried and tested already on the, on the online space. Um, that, uh, I think that gives, um, that gives this course an edge over some other courses that uh, that may have been uh, designed uh, for, for the first time now and where uh, obviously there will several iterations will be needed to iron out any um, any any issues there so yeah it's being tested over and over again and uh, vast majority of our students who graduated from this program are uh, working full-time, employed, and applying the same very tools that we're talking about here. Excellent. Great. And Mark, was there, um, was there a third part to the question? Sorry, I wasn't tracking your large question. No, 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 no there, there was, Russell, in fact, and uh, that's actually what I was going to follow up on. Uh, for all three of you gentlemen, actually, uh, a couple people have asked about this program in comparison to the online master's degree. Uh, mm -hmm. And would if you took this program would the online master's degree then seem repetitive or would it be more in depth or just they just wanted some more in depth knowledge just to compare the two programs yeah uh, should i answer this one Wolfram? uh yeah pleasure absolutely i might add something to to the end then please go of ahead. course so um so the short answer is um weird the, our target audiences are um, distinct. Uh, like we said, by design, this course was uh, inspired by our longer, uh, more in-depth online program. And uh, in our online program, our students uh, typically take it on a part-time basis, so it, which means 
it goes on for about two years, we have our first cohort of the online program graduating this year. So for, for so obviously for logistic reasons, uh, it's uh, the program goes into much more, the online program, the part-time online program that we offer on campus, uh, uh, goes into much more depth and covers much more material. It's also targeted at people who are intending not only to manage and overseeing business analytics projects, but people who are actually planning on working as data, uh, business analysts or quantitative analysts, uh, et cetera. Uh, Wolfram. Absolutely. So um, what I wanted to add here is it, at first glance, uh, sounds surprising if we're saying this is inspired by the material that we teach at Impro. Why don't we waive uh, credits for a particular course? The reason is actually quite simple. First of all, what Russell has pointed out already, there is no exam here, right? Um, if we were to uh, to to give credits that you could use in your in your masters at Impro, we obviously would have to have an exam. Uh, but secondly, and more importantly is we want to give you an overview of the entire landscape of business analytics. So what we have done is we have not just taken one course at Imperial College and teach that again to you, but rather what we have tried to do is we have tried to take the most important bits from a long, uh, from a broad variety of courses at the master's program. So there is no single course in our master's program that we could say afterwards, you now have the knowledge uh, the entire knowledge of that particular uh, course. Rather, what you would have is you would know the most important bits of probably five, six different courses in, at our master's program. And that's why we can't give you credit so that you can skip a particular course at Imperial College if you were to join our uh, master's program subsequently. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I did have a question. Uh, I think, Dr. Castro, I'm going to hand this question off to you because I think you mentioned this a bit, I think you mentioned this a bit more in your presentation, but we have several questions about Python. Um, so some people were asking about, is Python an interpreter or a compiled language? Uh, some people are simply nervous about what Python is and they need more of a rudimentary explanation as to what it is. But can you talk about uh, Python in this course and also will there be like a brief little boot camp or something to get people up to speed? How much familiarity do people need with Python before they begin? Gotcha. Okay, very good. I mean, very good questions. So, um, for those who ask about uh, compiled versus interpreted, so it does sound like people uh, who've asked it do have uh, some background in computer science. Uh, and so, uh, probably um, Python will be a breeze for you. So, Python is an interpreted language. Um, um, so, uh, for, those, uh, for those of you in the audience uh, uh, for which the, those terms don't make any sense. Don't worry, it's not important for this class. Yeah, so that is the very reason why we've designed this Python primer. We literally walk you from, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from A to B, assuming that you don't know any Python at all, or in fact, that you don't know any programming at all. So the idea is we do not expect you to be proficient at programming in Python. Uh, upon completing this module, well, what we do hope though is that you will have a good general understanding of Python to be able to form an intelligent opinion about say a project involving Python or to actually help, help guide you if you desire to further educate yourself in programming and specifically in Python. So do not worry, our Python module is a boot camp, so to speak to use that term, uh, it will actually walk you, uh, it's going to be your first steps in Python and it assumes no previous knowledge on Python. In fact, if I may add to that, uh, we try to implement a layered approach. If you already have some background in Python, great. There will be parts in the assignment for you in the assignments for you that uh, that uh, will enable you to further expand on your Python skills and uh, really understand how to use Python in uh, in data analytics. Uh, if you are new to Python, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we'll take you through the steps, and uh, then there will be uh, there will be basically some some extra tasks for those that are already uh, familiar with the software. 
that, that is the idea to make sure that uh, we can bring together a crowd, some of which uh, who already have some prior exposure to Python, as well as some uh, of you who have no prior coding experience. Um, if I may add to that, I think if you don't have any coding experience, Python is a very good language to start with. Uh, because um, once you understand the basics of Python, many other programming languages such as C++ and so on, uh, operate under, under similar terms. It is just that uh, these other programming languages, I think are much more tedious to learn and progress is much slower. So Python is a much more, learning Python is a much more gratifying process. And um, we are in a lucky situation nowadays that Python is actually one of the major programming languages that is being used worldwide. So it is not just for pedagogical reasons, it is really um, out of necessity because uh, this is the lingua franca nowadays. Uh, Professor Wiesemann, um, you talked a little bit about in your earlier presentation about needing some knowledge, I, I hope I'm getting this right, but uh, needing a background when it comes to math and probability theory. Uh, we've had a couple people, some people have remarked about needing a background in Python, but some people who are my people, it sounds like, are hearing math, oh no. So uh, could you talk a little bit about um, how much math, separate from coding, but how much math is required for this course? Thank you for bringing this point up, Mark. This is a, uh, this is a very important point. And here again, uh, we're going to drive a similar strategy. The idea is that this course is suitable for people with any level of mathematical background. We are going to develop all the principles essentially from scratch that we need as part of this course. And also, again, we have a layered approach, for example, um, I just remember the material on support vector machines. What we're going to have is we are covering all the important aspects of support vector machines um, in a very intuitive way, which does not require any mathematics um, or very basic levels of mathematics that we're going to easily cover with all of you. And then for those people that are interested in really knowing the details, there are going to be some pointers and developing some further materials that can be skipped by other people without any loss of continuity. So the key message here is um, we ask you to be open to a certain basic level of mathematics. So be curious, but we don't ask you to bring any particular prerequisites when it comes to mathematics. Leave this to us. This is going to be uh, our task to, uh, to teach you whatever is necessary to understand these methods. Thank you so much, Professor. We also had a couple questions about the data that we're gonna be using in this course. Uh, are we mainly going to be discussing and using big data sets or are we going to be talking about smaller data sets from surveys, for example, and is this course going to be looking at qualitative data as well? Alex, uh, can you take this uh, question, please? Yes. Um, so there are two answers here in terms of data set sizes um, for let's say pedagogical reasons are, they, and, and I have to be a bit clear what we mean by it when we say big data. So these days, big data mean data that does not fit into your laptop. So no, we're not gonna be using any data sets that you possibly could not accommodate on your personal machine. Now that said, um, some of the data sets we're going to use, they're, they're moderate size, they're probably gonna run from if we talk in terms in, in spreadsheet terms, anywhere from hundreds of rows to thousands of rows. But from a pedagogic point of view, um, it doesn't make sense for us to go much, uh, uh, much, uh, um, much beyond that because uh, the, the techniques and the sort of the methods that we're gonna be talking about would easily generalize to larger data sets. Uh, there, would be, there would be some thinking required in terms of optimization on how to handle those bigger data sets, but that's more an engineering problem than a, let's say, uh, algorithmic uh, and uh, uh, business analytics uh, problem per se. So yeah, we're gonna, there will be various different types of data sets, but uh, in terms of the size of those data sets, nothing to worry about. 
I fully agree. Uh, the, other, the, the other issue is if we were to look at truly huge data sets, we would have to spend months possibly on discussing all the technical background when it comes to be it Hadoop, uh, uh, how to set up a relational right. database and so on. This is stuff uh, that is normally left to, uh, to computer scientists who have years of experience in those, uh, in those uh, specific topics. That would, I believe, not be the best use of our four months. So what we are really trying to do is we are assuming the data fits on a computer and then we see how can we make sense out of data? How, we, how can we take good decisions uh, from data? If you uh, later on would face huge data sets, which by the way, not that many companies face. Um, I've been uh, doing consulting projects with many different companies, many large companies as well. And um, most of the time, uh, for example, with my, uh, with my most recent customer, we had a data set about, of about three and a half million customers that very easily fits on a laptop. There's absolutely no problem. Um, so uh, those huge data sets, which, we, which would require a specific infrastructure, while they are very prominent in the media, um, they are not, to, to my understanding, something that occurs necessarily day-to-day -day life in the industry. And that's why we're not focusing on, on such problems here. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Castro. Very quickly, uh, before we wrap up, there was one question about, you referred to Excel and Python and then Ample. There have been multiple people asking, how do you spell that? So I... So I'll take that one, Wolfram. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, Alpha Mike uh, uh, A M P L Ample. There we go. Wolfram okay. just uh, posted it on the chat. Yeah. Thank you so much. And the much. reason for that is, by the way, uh, just to just to add to this, Ample is actually um, a very expensive software product. It starts. Um, I think the. I've, I've recently purchased a couple of versions for, for, for our research group. I think for academics, you pay a few thousand dollars for, for, for an ample version. I have worked together with industrial partners, um, actually uh, uh, companies that run a cascade of hydropower plants, um, and they have spent more than 100,000 euros on, uh, on ample. Uh, the reason why I want to cover this software is because when you go to... Uh, when you go to uh, the, the, the real world large scale optimization problems that, uh, that some companies face, this is kind of the state of the art method that, uh, that companies use. And I want to, um, should, you, should you at some point want to change careers and, uh, and you want to um, demonstrate to your potential future employer uh, that, you, that you know about uh, prescriptive analytics, uh, being able to tell them, I know how to use Ample. I think that is, um, in my experience, that is certainly uh, a distinguishing feature that many employers um, appreciate. And it also shows you that with the skills of this course, you have really, uh, you, you have mastered this software. It, we, have, we have taken kind of the, the, uh, the mystique out of this software, let's say. Thank you so much, everyone. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time for this information <laughs> webinar. Um, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Please go back to that chat box and click on that link. If you have further questions about Emeritus, click on that link, get yourself a program advisor. If you have further questions on where this webinar is available, uh, the size of the learning team, being in the cohort, click on that link. Uh, this program starts in one week on March 31st, so don't miss your chance to be part of this amazing cohort. I want to thank uh, Russell Miller for his time today, our Director of Learning Solutions Innovation. Thank you, Russell, so much for joining us. Thank you. I want to thank Professor Wolfram Wiesemann for his time. Thank you so much, Professor Wiesemann, for your time. Thank you all for tuning in. I really hope to see uh, many of you uh, next week. And Dr. Alex Castro, I want to thank you so much for your time and innovation. I want to thank you so much for your time on this webinar as well, Dr. Castro. Thanks, Mark, and thanks for thanks everyone who attended the, the webinar. Um, looking forward to seeing all of you. And on behalf of everyone at Imperial College and at Emeritus, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you all in the classroom. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay safe, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.